abortions. Hoes need 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 abortions. Need abortions, hoes need abortions, hoes need abortions. Yeah, female power, pussy power. Show your strength, kill your baby. When you kill your baby, you're gonna prove to everybody that you are independent, strong woman who have power to kill. And that, my friends, is the perfect example of the psychopathy because psychopaths they believe that everything around them is just extension of their ego therefore they can manipulate everything and anything they see other people as uh, cardboard figures carved out with the scissors they can manipulate they can tear apart they can destroy and that psychopathic entity the metaphysical evil which has its tentacles called demons is controlling this planet um, I call it the Holy Trinity ironically the reptiles the born in Illuminati and the psychopaths okay and this is the active part then there is a passive part called monkeys or us which are beta males and beta females followers and among us so-called followers there are those people with the soul who are the positive alphas right these are the natural leaders <laughs> and readers and they're gonna be targeted so we have natural alphas monkeys and negative alphas <laughs> Why do they hunt? When old ideas that they hunt when they're hungry, when there isn't a lot of fruit around. But as things turn out, it's exactly the opposite. The monkey gets out on a small branch and he's momentarily trying to decide what to do. Another chimpanzee comes from an adjacent tree jumps onto the other end of the bow, runs at the monkey from behind, grabs him. We got one. I was standing maybe 15 feet from them, watching this. Great male chimpanzees each took an arm or a leg, and they literally started drawing and quartering this monkey. Here, here's a leg, it's yours. Curva alphas mediocres negative alphas so those negative alphas which are mind controlled and which are demonic infested that means those tentacles of evil are among them reptiles which i know that they exist because i've seen the eyes they are just physical manifestation of uh, those demons uh, born in illuminati people born in into the reptilian families and mind controlled and genetically a little bit different than us humans they are also infested with the demonic entities through the different sub-personalities and these people are very unhealthy to have around but they are around you and me of course more than one percent of people born in and then you have psychopaths psychopaths are humans which uh, have disabled frontal lobes and i'm gonna touch that uh, in the next uh, hour or so and uh, these people are of course permanently infested by the demonic entities and they are stupid on their own but they are incredibly incredibly intelligent when they are moved by that higher metaphysical power 
which I in my meditations see as a cube and back in the day I foolishly believed that I'm unique but then I figured it out that cube symbolics is quite known so first I'm gonna tell you about my country Croatia Croatia has a four million people and since 1978 in Croatia we killed one and a half million babies so statistically speaking if those in past 40 years uh, one and a half million babies had uh, two till three children we would now have 50% uh, of population more we would have maybe six million people instead of four so speaking about white genocide I'm leaving it I'm living in it and I'm gonna be talking about the Croatian women and how toxic they became and I witnessed that progression of toxicity but first I gonna speak uh, about United States with a little metaphor being it's um, 10,000 people killed and in 2016 36,000 people were murdered by the rifles in United States two-thirds of those are suicides and about 70% of suicides are males right so this is what rifle killed and this is what hoes need abortions her right to kill killed it killed incredibly 860,000 people in United States so oh, kurva. before we continue I just want to tell you one thing about the speech programming they call it abortion it's not abortion it's murder and it's human sacrifice they call collateral damage collateral damage it's not collateral damage collateral damage sounds like a piece of equipment drop on the floor it's not it's a massive human murder and it's demonic sacrifice they call it capital punishment it's not capital punishment it's called murder and it's human sacrifice there is always one thing on this planet there is human sacrifice this one is done with the firearm they wanna uh, forbid because they are dangerous and this is what they call the family planning these are killed children these are killed people these are people who could have in a future great life in one of the best countries in the world who could have who could have American dream in most of the cases and uh, who could have families of their own but they've been cut into pieces and then sent to the pharmaceutical industry to the you know La Roche cream so uh, all the cunts can uh, try to fake youth with uh, baby parts on their faces so this is what I think of them and this is why I don't have a very high opinion of the white women because they in majority they really align themselves with the demonic hierarchy and this is of course very visible in the feminism of the third stage in no way and this is me speaking in general terms in no way shape or form do I believe that a man should ever put his hands on a woman that's point blank period marching to the feminism of the fourth stage and feminism of the fourth stage calls for the murder of all males to kill all men I am sick of being a baby factory that produces more men that will just in the future subjugate me 
So the only answer to that is to kill male babies and um, just kill any man that you see, like in the streets, like any swinging dick, just kill him. Because um, we want the species to go on, but we want it only to go on with women in it. So, so there are two basic levels of the programming. There is this, I call it, higher level and the lower level. The higher level comes from the Trinity, Reptiles, Illuminati, Psychopaths. The machine uh, knows how to manage its uh, farm planets and uh, that machine in certain uh, parts of your historical development is simply pushing you in a certain direction. In this, in this day and age is of course working on the white genocide as introduction into the uh, global human depopulation which uh, gonna lead tomorrow to the Hunger Games kind of scenario where survivors gonna be piled in mega cities and working and used as a food and not later that later uh, gonna come the new human um, form which gonna be more reptilian but uh, one thing really intrigued me in the dynamics between sexes because I need to tell you a little bit uh, of personal thing which really intrigued me to do this video uh, which was you guys know that I've been in Southeast Asia between 2011 and 2017 and uh, story goes like this in 2000 2001 I noticed here in my home city that uh, sometimes young girls are throwing down a look at this guy or uh, you know this and that and you know it's kind of weird behavior because um, I was not noticing it before in other people but um, you know behavior kind of which is uh, um, normally attributed to the subcultural groups maybe gang members or people from uh, broken families alcoholic father and so on and I noticed that and it was kind of weird and of course I was never uh, talking back responding back this is uh, not something what uh, we do here and um, and then in 2008, 9, 10, I noticed the excal ex uh, escalation of that kind of behavior, more aggressive, more loud, more in your face. Again, I was not talking back, you know, oh my God, look at this guy, oh, he's so fucking disgusting, oh, look at that bitch, oh my God, she's so, uh, you know, did you notice that old bitch, oh my God, or did you notice that old guy? <laughs> it's like, um, you know, it's kind of, it was really kind of like, what the fuck is going on with these guys? And this was mostly... Um, you know, um, kind of focused in the uh, young people, the teenage girls have uh, been acting like that and like, uh, not, not really women in their 30s and 40s, it was not behavior, the, you know, ladies knew how to behave themselves. And then I went for the Asia and um, the rule of four male Khmers is the rule of uh, about 100% chances that they're gonna start throwing down racist slurs um, if you are around them in let's say typical little restaurant where they serve chicken with rice for two dollars or uh, strudel noodle soup noodle soup uh, which is actually very nice in most of the cases for a dollar 25 cents uh, you know I could like say many things but I learned with the time that A, never enter a restaurant when I see a group of four Khmer eating uh, males, especially if they're drinking beer. Second thing, if I'm eating and they enter, I will normally just change at least two tables away from them. No shame, just move away my stuff, change uh, position, and uh, or simply speed up eating. And the rule of 50% was rule uh, for all other Khmer like let's say if I have like a typical five six member family uh, members uh, around me then I would expect 50% um, of chances they're gonna start throw down standard uh, racist uh, slurs and so on so this is something I wanna I wanted to say and I was actually always very grateful to the Khmer people if they didn't start with their racist um, routine I was like wow you know I'm really impressed. <laughs> That's so nice of them. I'm still very grateful to all the Khmer people who are not assholes and who are not racist.
But from the women, from the Asian women, I was receiving smiles, um, if they were not boozing with them. Um, smiles, flirting, I, uh, I cook for you, come my house, I cook for you, and I flirt like that, which was, you know, for me very shocking because, <laughs> of course, that I was uh, not um, attractive to the white females and and it, and it it can I, I, uh, if I'm now speaking too much, I'm just gonna tell you like I came from Croatia already trained not to look at the women when I see a, a woman on a street, white woman. Of course, I would like to look other way, not make eye contact, hope that she's not gonna throw anything down. And when I moved to Asia, uh, males started to appreciate that that I'm not even looking at their women, not flirting with them. So this was kind of social plus that worked for me. This training from Croatia. You know, woman, <laughs> do not notice her. It's the enemy passing. It's the snake. It's the wolf. You know, just make a circle around her. Definitely, you know, everything's gonna be fine if you know how to behave. Do not respond provocation or hate and so on. So I returned back home, and when I returned back home, on my huge surprise, I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Even women in their 30s and 40s started to throw down, started to, you know, uh, shitloads of disgusting looks, like uh, it's impossible even in my neighborhood to go to the shopping mall and buy something and return back without noticing two, three, four disgusting looks. One comment and if I go downtown I'm gonna hear some, uh, you know, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three comments, throwdowns, repetitive throwdowns. Oh my god, you are kakuye yad and you see a video, it's like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, you know, and, and they started to behave like that towards other women as well. So, in short, the, the toxicity um, escalated. Okay, so now you know where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the Croatia. Croatian women are bitches and it's, you know, and they are definitely gold diggers. One of those things you heard about Eastern European women. Yes, they are. On a car. There has to be a limit. Well, okay, what limit? At least an allowance, you know, every month. How much? okay. <laughs> How much do you want? <laughs> 10,000 per month? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Then I guess we're not getting married. Be nice. reasonable. Be reasonable. I am reasonable. That's I didn't say 50,000 or 100,000. Uh -huh. 10,000. And Fisa comes off as a little bit too focused on money. I'm hoping to grow out of that phase once we get married. Um, if she's young, if she's beautiful, especially if she's blonde, she's fucking toxic. Okay, stay away from her. This is experience of millions of Eastern Europeans telling you and other people who had uh, encounters with them. So, um... Hey, Mala, prosti, uspori Mala. Prvi put sam ovdje u ovom kvartu, pa htio bi nešto pojesti, pa ako bi mi htjela pokazat neki restoran. Evo, ja častim. Joj, fakat ne znam, sorry. I šta, prosti. Ej, sad sam se sjetila, ima jedan tu blizu, ako hoćeš mogu ti pokazati. To sam zapravo i predložio, ajde, upadaj. Ajde, može, nije bed. Stani, 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 pričekaj malo. Uh, vidiš, zapravo stvar je u tome što ne volim sponzoruše. Molim? Kad ti materi na džubre jedno. Kurva! The dynamics of the psychopathy is a particular thing. Um, I'm gonna make uh, another intro and I apologize to my old viewers because I'm gonna repeat certain things from Cambodia. In Cambodia I noticed that um, hate group has a certain phases in a hate. First phase is noticing, they're noticing you, they start hey, hey, cow, nia, hey. They start like that, uh, look at this guy, uh, video, -vog, video -vog, like women in Croatia. So this is the first uh, phase they do. Second phase is the phase called throwing down, 
Farang, Chikai, Kampuchea, Pai, Maui, Mao, Cow, Cow, basically Whitey, fuck off, this is our country, Whitey, White Dog, which is N-word or a cracker. I think cracker is not that bad word like N-word, but you know. And um, so these are two stages. Third stage is the mental construct when uh, the psychopath in the group gonna start. <coughs> Barang, uh, Whitey, <coughs> Army, Bo, he's from the army, <coughs> CIA, Bo, he's, uh, he's CIA, and then they're gonna go, <coughs> Kampuche, now they're like defending their country, you know, Farang Mui, Farang Mui, he's only one guy. So this is the phase of mental construct. First two phases were emotional, third phase is mental, and then comes the fourth phase. Somebody throws a stone in the window, of course, in Cambodia, all windows are barred with a double glass yeah people still there it's a <laughs> culture and home invasions and you know and stuff all that uh but i'm not talking to that uh that topic about um, somebody gonna kick a door with the foot uh, somebody gonna throw a stone or if in you know if the whole thing is going on in the longer run you're gonna have kids trying to ram in you with the bike while other Family members are standing there to protect the child. If you respond, of course, you're a smart guy. You're not going to respond. Or 10, 11 year old boys are hitting you with a fist in front of their peer group, which is, of course, massive two digit number. And you know, you have, you have the idea. This is the escalation. So, in short, when somebody hates you, that somebody will go through the uh, four stages. And as much as I know psychopathy, uh, I know one thing psychopath will always try to completely destroy the victim and complete destruction is uh, emotional destruction mental destruction the smear campaign the physical destruction uh, killing you and the final um, aspect of uh, that kind of destruction in some cases is even consumption of a flesh and a body organs as a part of the ritual and taking the nutrients so this is also happening so what I notice with the um, with the male and female dynamics as I notice it's definitely progressing in my country and I'm kind of Eastern European but not really Eastern European because I'm living like 200 kilometers west from Vienna and you know better just watch this American gentleman what he's saying about Croatia now the six things that are shocking when you hear, and I guess you wouldn't be that shocked when you see what a beautiful country this is, but how proud the Croatians are of being Croatian. And the thing is, it's not just they're proud about being Croatian. I'm proud about being Croatian in Dalmatia and my beautiful city Split is the most beautiful city in Croatia. Now I'm not biased because it's, it's just a fact. People have such pride in their hometowns and in their communities here, and they really, really do enjoy it. And what's cool for a tourist is, yes, you can see the history, and they've really done a great job of preserving it with the buildings like Diocletian's Palace in, in, uh, in Split, where they built the city inside of it. You can still see the mausoleum there and those kind of things. It's been turned into cathedral, and you can see all these things. But where I see it really great is when you go to the smaller museums, the city museums in different little towns. The city museum in Shibanik, it's just tiny museums but it's done fantastically well and you can tell that the people are super proud of their country and that's one of the things that's cool is they put the effort into making their communities look better and be better for us tourists as well and and also for themselves and that is really cool and kind of going along with that is the shock you'll get if you call this place Yugoslavia it's not Yugoslavia man that's 20 years ago okay 25 years ago 30 years ago <laughs> it's Croatia stick with Croatia not Yugoslavia all right and following along with that pride and how well these, these cities have been put together and how they're well they're designed and how easy it is for tourists, it really goes into the shock of how great the tourism infrastructure is in Croatia. Not just on the beach in Dalmatian coast or Istria, but throughout the country. You've got tons of buses, you can take trains some places, you've got ferries that go to the islands you can get to, tons of restaurants, tons of hotels, tons of bars and clubs. I mean, there's a ferry in Havar that will take you to a club that only starts after midnight. I mean, they have all these things for you, which is great for a tourist. It kind of shocks you because a lot of people think, oh, Croatia, that's Eastern Europe. They don't have any service. They don't have any of those things. Oh, no, 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 no. 
Croatia has been getting tourists for hundreds of years. They know how to treat people right. They know how to feed you, to water you and drink you and show you a good time, take you on the boats, give you the figs in Rakia and have a great time. And that's what shocks a lot of tourists because they think, oh, I'm going to like an Eastern European. No, no, this is Southern Europe. You're on the Adriatic. It's a different, whole different ball game. It is really awesome here. And to go along with that, the next thing that shocks a lot of tourists is how many people speak English here. Look, tourism is a great thing and they bring a lot of money in and all kinds of stuff and the people know that but they also know that hey I got to talk to the tourists to tell them how proud we are how great this stuff is about the history of Vis and all these kind of things and they share those things and they share it in English and what's shocking is how well the English descriptions are and a lot of not just the big museums and big sites but also in the smaller museums as well and that's really awesome so that being said and um Oops, I think it's going to start to rain. Excuse me. I think it's just going to be short little rain, but nevertheless. And uh, so uh, we all know from psychology that uh, females are mostly instigating fights against males. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's an evolutionary thing. She's trying to test you, she's trying to see if you're a strong man, if she can break your balls and you crawl, then she's gonna, you know, continue basically destroying you and, until she wipes the floor with you and she's done with you because, let's face it, she has a vagina, she doesn't need another vagina. So what happened in this dynamics, and I'm talking about the Western civilization between men and women, is um, that reptiles give a, man, give a female a uh, right to kill you know it's her body right it's family planning okay it's the progress it's her liberty and um, they also give her right to attack a male you know to slap him to spit him to hit him and as i was hit numerous times uh, uh, while working and uh, she's also given right uh, you know she can call cops and if you have a fight and they're gonna pick you up for the night in the prison and um, you no, know, it's only her word. It doesn't have to be the truth. You know, just check out what's going on in Israel. You will be amazed. There is a great documentary about that, and of course, that nation gonna be demographically destroyed, unfortunately. <laughs> Потом было против высказанной воли, то есть женщина должна была озвучить, что я не хочу. Сейчас это тоже убрали. То есть женщина не говорит, что она не хочет, но внутри себя она не согласна. Молчит, все, это будет классифицироваться как изнасилование. Семь лет, пять лет, десять лет, двадцать лет, в зависимости от тяжести. Не нужно ни побоев, я извиняюсь, ни, ни доказательства, ни спермы, ничего. Достаточно слова. In autumn 2015, Yaakov Malushkin, a taxi driver, made the headlines all over Israel. Приехал на адрес, зашла женщина и сразу в наглой форме объявляет мне, что она будет курить в машине. У меня работает кондиционер, я сам не курю. Я говорю, выйди из машины. Она начала ругаться матом, хватать меня за руки. Я позвонил в полицию. Пока я звонил в полицию, она начала кричать, что ее насилуют. Так, чтобы через телефон полиция это слышала. Полиция приехала, наверное, через три или пять минут. Очень быстро. Шотер, что приехал на его, в общем, автоматически аминь ла, и не аминь ло. Он вообще не относился к его в этой ситуации. В общем, Яков был Ашем, и она была тот, кто уткфа, и она была корбан. לולא הייתה לו את מערכת המצ... המצלמות הזאת שהותקנה ברכב שלו, לולא האירוע הזה היה מוסרד בווידאו, 
יעקב היה מוצא את עצמו מואשם בעבירה חמורה מאוד, הוא היה יושב בכלא בגין העבירה הזאת. יעקב had bought a dash cam two weeks before the incident. He was sick of women threatening him when they didn't want to pay. And uh, another thing is, um, in that uh, very sick uh, dynamics, the thing which is happening is, um, um, maybe it sounds difficult for you to, to, to accept it, and it was definitely for me, but the way the whole thing is going on, it's not a surprise that uh, third wave feminism is asking for a murder of a male because if male is no longer a male and we know that uh, uh, definitely a level of testosterone is changing in the modern man uh, they're losing uh, sperm counts we have a um, surge of uh, soy boys uh, uh, guys who are you know opening their mouth and acting like a children Khmeras are also like that <laughs> <laughs> like that we have that as a phenomena we have a phenomena of transvestites Southeast Asia is full of them especially Thailand we have a surge of uh, gay people as well this is also you know sign of the end of the civilization by the way term for gays in 1960s was pederasta pederasta pederastia means those who love boys and we know they love boys uh, and <coughs> you know um, but they, they really managed to hide it through the PR and uh, so all that so all that dynamics is um, leading me to uh, just you know a little advice to you how to deal with the aggressive females and I'm just gonna speak from my experience and uh, uh, how to understand that 